All right, guys, so in the most recent video, we talked about if I have um, a rectangle or a rhombus or a square, then what do I know? We're going to do the converse today. What does it take to prove a quadrilateral uh, would necessarily be a rectangle, rhombus, or a square? Now, this should be a shorter video. We should be able to roll through this pretty quickly. And we're not going to do the proofs. We're just going to kind of talk through the proofs um, on a lot of these. So I think a lot of them are pretty obvious. So we'll just go ahead and start here. These are the necessary conditions. So if I have a parallelogram, how do I know that it for sure is a rectangle? So one way, these are the two theorems we should know from rectangles, um, two converse theorems. One is that if my parallelogram has one right angle, let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit. Um, if it has one right angle, Let's see, there we go. Let's take a look at this example right here. Um, then it has to be a rectangle. Now, if you think about this, this should make sense. Okay, we know angles opposite each other in parallelograms are congruent, right? So we know that's going to be 90. But we also know something about angles next to each other, consecutive angles. Consecutive angles in a um, parallelogram add up to 180, right? So I've got 180 minus 90, and we should know where this is going. So this guy right here is going to be 90, okay? Because it's next to a 90. And that makes this one 90, and sure enough, here we go. We've got ourselves a uh, rectangle from a parallelogram with one right angle. So let's do this again now. Here's a, here's a second theorem. The second theorem is if I have congruent diagonals, then I need to have, um, in a, if I have congruent diagonals in a parallelogram, <coughs> excuse me, um, then it's going to have to be a rectangle. And this is actually just kind of backwards from the proof that we looked at in the last video. So ACD, we would consider, let's pull a um, triangle ACD out. And let's pull out ABD. Okay, so we're just kind of pulling these triangles out from uh, my rectangle, so ABD. Now, I know that AD is congruent to AD because it's reflexive, right? That's the, just the shared side right here. Um, I know opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, so these would be congruent. And then I also happen to know that the diagonals are congruent. And that's because of this uh, given statement here. So that means these triangles are congruent, which means A is the same size as angle D. Well, not only is it the same size, but they're next to each other, so they have to add up to 180. So this must be 90 degrees. It's the only number that's equal to itself and then adds up to 90, or equal to two of them add up to 90. Um, okay? So those are your first two theorems. First one is um, if I have a right angle in my parallelogram, it has to be a, a rectangle. And then the second one is if I have diagonals congruent, it's going to be a rectangle. And those are our two rectangle theorems. Now, our rhombus theorems are maybe a little bit more complicated. The first one's pretty easy. If I have two congruent consecutive, that means next to each other, two congruent consecutive sides in a parallelogram, that's going to have to be a rhombus. And we know opposite sides are congruent, right? So FG needs to match EH, and then EF has to match GH, right? Opposite sides are congruent, so, and there we have a rhombus. That's pretty easy. Another way I could tell that my um, parallelogram has to be a rhombus is if the diagonals are perpendicular. Now let's, again, let's kind of zoom in here, and let's take a look at this guy. So let's think about these shapes. Okay, these triangles. If I know that this is perpendicular, okay, I also happen to know that this angle up here is congruent to this one. Those are alternate interior. Um, and I happen to know that this is perpendicular, and this is perpendicular, and that's perpendicular. Those are all, are all, they're all 90 degrees, right? Um, I also, let's think about what else we know here. Uh, okay, here we go. So we know it's a shared side, right? We know it's 90 degrees, and we also know diagonals bisect each other. If I'm looking at this triangle and this triangle here, triangle one and triangle two here, okay? I, I know that E uh, to the middle and G to the middle, those are both congruent because diagonals bisect each other. We actually end up not needing these guys here. Sorry, I should have thought this through a little bit before I jumped in. 
Um, so you end up here, there we go. All right, I know these two are equal to each other. That becomes important because then I know that these guys are equal to each other. That also means that this angle out here by CPCTC is also equal to that angle out there. Now, that makes this whole triangle an isosceles triangle. I've got base angles that are congruent. That means the sides are congruent. And then opposite sides are congruent, and we end up here. So if I have a perpendicular um, with my diagonals, if they make a perpendicular, then I have a rhombus. All right, let's, uh, let's look at this last one here. Okay, this last one says if one diagonal bisects the angles, then it's a rhombus. And this is actually very quick. Look, this FGH triangle, it's isosceles. Base angles are congruent, that means the sides are congruent. Look at this EFH triangle. I also know that these guys are congruent, and they also have to be equal to these other sides. So because opposite sides are congruent, done. It's a rhombus, okay? So those are three theorems that we wanna keep an eye on when we're uh, looking at these, what makes it have to be. So there's really two ways to handle this. One way is to um, kind of think about it. This is probably the way I would think about it. If they give you some, some, um, some facts, you know, about a certain thing, instead of thinking about a theorem, I would just think through, well, does that force it to be a rhombus? Does it force it to be a rectangle? Uh, the last thing we need to talk about is how do we prove if something's a square? Um, and let's just look at this example here. How would I determine if this is a square or not? So let's say we know it's a parallelogram, okay? So we've got a parallelogram, okay, going on here. And then they tell me it has one right angle. So what is it right now? It's a rectangle, right? And let's say they also tell me I have uh, perpendicular diagonals. Well, that would be a rhombus. So the only way we get to square is if I get a rhombus property and a rectangle property in the same parallelogram. Then it becomes a square. Remember, squares don't have any properties that are unique to themselves. Okay, so, so if it's going to be a square, we need a rhombus property and a rectangle property. That's going to prove a square. Okay, most of the questions are just straight up questions about, you know, what if I have this, what shape does it have to be? What if I have this, what shape does it have to be? So either study your theorems and know them very well, or be able to think logically um, about what they've given you and what that forces your shape to be. So this wraps up our lesson for proving special parallelograms.